Welcome back everyone. Today I am participating in another Aussie YouTube pop-up. We have a mood board to help us along this time and the theme for the month of July is play. I found these photos and I thought they were most appropriate for the theme play and they are of my son. He is playing with some Lego blocks and the other photo, that photo that you see there first, is of the his little finished Lego truck. I did not pre-plan this layout but I did go through my stash of papers and chose some papers that I thought would go well with the theme and the mood board so and the photos of course so what I am going to do first is because of the papers that I had chosen I decided that I wanted to mat my photos first on some beige colored cardstock Okay, my two photos are now matted and I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do with these papers that I have pulled out. Oh my gosh, this paper has been in my stash for, I'd say, a decade. Who remembers K and Company? My apologies, but I wasn't recording and I did trim my cardstock that I'm going to be using uh, all four sides, about a centimetre on all four sides, and now I'm just going to be gutting this very old gorgeous paper that I'm finally using on a layout and that's because I want to use the inside on my layout as well or at least I think I do. I really should plan, plan my layouts more because once I've adhered my cardstock onto my frame I was really 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 lost. I in the end I land up getting some papers and I just make I think it's I use three squares of different papers but you know with three squares of driven papers I'm talking about an hour just fiddling around because I had no idea what I was doing. If anyone out there pre-plans every single layout can you please let me know does it save time or do you just spend more time on the other end searching through pin interest trying to get the inspiration because you know I spent a considerable amount of time moving paper around because I had not pre-planned my layout. But I'm leaving the paper as it is for now and I went into my stash again and I found these gorgeous chipboard Lego blocks and I went oh my gosh I had no idea I had them and then while looking for the Lego blocks I found this what is it it's a die cut I don't know what it is it's from my mind's eye and it says all star and it's from 2006 I couldn't believe it and I went yes I'm using it it's perfect for this layout so I'm so excited that on this layout I got to use some of my old stash. You've probably noticed by now that the hardest and the longest bit about this putting this layout together was fiddling around with those three squares. I don't know why but I insisted that those three squares had to go sort of on an angle and they looked more like triangles and it's not till I let go of that concept that I had in my head and I flip them around and I actually use them as, as squares that this whole layout comes together. I don't know why I was being so stubborn about having them on the angle like that. I'm going to confess this is where I got frustrated so I went and I made myself a cup of tea and when I came back with my fresh eyes, I realized that the photo is what was throwing out my whole, lay whole layout. So what I did was I trimmed it down about 1.5 centimeters and then I remattered it and it was just perfect. So because I've got everything just the way I want it, I'm just going to use little bits of glue everywhere to make sure that none of this moves. Because as you know, I've spent quite a considerable amount of time getting everything in exactly the right spot. Finally, I'm happy with the layout and how it's coming together. So I'm going to add some foam to the back of my photos. I like to do this for some added height and mainly on this layout because of the fact that I have the all-star uh, circle there, that, that cardboard is actually quite thick so uh, the photo wasn't going to sit flat on the on the other papers and just by adding the fun foam or the foam it's not really fun foam here because it's got no adhesive the ones I buy at the cheap shop here uh, it just adds that little bit of height and makes everything more cohesive so gluing down that very old uh, mind's eye die cut or whatever it is and I'm pretty happy with the way things are going so adding my little lego blocks back in trying to see how 
I like it and this is where I decide that they're going to be coloured in. To add some colour to these chipboards what I'm going to do is add a coat of gesso and once the gesso has dried I'm going to go in with some oh what was it the Inca gold and the colour is old silver and I'm just going to paint two of the Lego blocks in the Inca gold and then I'm going to add some yellow Kaiser mist to them just to get that yellow yellow Lego blocks happening and the other two I'm going to actually paint using some Nouveau expanding mousse in a bluey color. I want to thank Raylene who organizes the Aussie YouTube hops for the great mood board. These colors I would not normally use and I just love how well they go with my photos and that little flare button there that you said that you saw me putting on is one from my stash and it says do all things with love and then I found this little banner this ye little yellow banner in my stash and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my word stickers on there and it actually says challenge your challenge yourself which I thought was quite appropriate for my son challenging himself with these lego blocks that he builds usually without much help from us adults I decided I wanted to add some splatters to my layout so I am using the Kaiser Mist in the colour Aqua. Okay we're at the final stages of the layout and I'm just going to add my blue Legos and you will notice that the yellow leg Legos do not make it onto this layout. The reason for that is because I forgot all about the title. So once I realised I needed a title for my layout, I went to my stash of thickers and I found these letters. They are actually from Aldi and they were perfect for this layout. The colours and even the sizing was absolutely perfect. The other thing I did to the layout, which you, you won't see on screen, is I got out my sewing machine and I zigzagged with some yellow thread all around the border and I love the added texture and just that finishing touch that just by uh, doing a bit of stitching gives to the layout, which you should be able to see in the still shots. In the description box below, I will actually link the next participant's video link in the hop and so please click on their link watch their video comment on their video and thank you all for participating in this lovely aussie youtube hop till next time and if you like what you see i would love it if you hit on the subscribe button and notifications like it and till next time bye everybody